Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman. I've got a quick one today. I got in this mouse from Logitech. This is the G305 Lightspeed. And although this looks like kind of your run-of-the-mill mouse, it's actually part of the Logitech gaming line of mice. And it works with their customization software. So I thought we would do a quick overview of what this low-cost gaming mouse is all about. Now, I do want to let you know in the interest of full disclosure that I acquired this in a very odd way. Uh, this got sent to my mother's house by accident. Amazon made a mistake and she ended up with it. So I thought I would bring it here and review it and then maybe give it back to her if she needs a mouse. She's not much of a gamer, but this is not a bad mouse just for casual use as well. No one is paying for this review, nor has anyone reviewed or approved what you're about to see before it was uploaded. So let's get into it now and see what this mouse is all about. Now, if it's not obvious already, this is a wireless mouse, but it does not work with Bluetooth. The receiver, though, has a nice little storage location inside the mouse, so if you do move around to different computers, you can store this with it and not lose it. Uh, this will plug into any standard USB port. If your computer only has USB Type-C, you'll need to get an adapter. It runs on a single AA battery. It comes with one, a Duracell here, uh, but you can also, of course, use rechargeables or something else if you want. They say you get about 250 hours of usage out of the battery. I have not measured 250 hours just yet, but I've been using it for a couple of days and we have not yet killed the battery. Uh, this is running with the Logitech Optical Hero Sensor. You have an on-off switch here on the bottom to turn it on or off so you can better conserve the battery if you're going to not use it for a while by switching that switch to the off position. Uh, they say it has a one millisecond report rate uh, out of that USB dongle, so it should feel pretty accurate. And because it's not using Bluetooth, I don't think you'll see much latency with it. I certainly didn't feel any as I was playing around with it. Uh, the resolution on the mouse will go from 200 to 12,000 DPI. Now, as far as buttons go on this, you've got your standard left-right mouse buttons along with a clickable scroll wheel. This button right here is used for adjusting the sensitivity of the mouse, and I'll show you how that works in a minute. On the left-hand side, you've got two buttons here that will work differently depending on the software that you might be using. On a web browser, these, of course, will go back and forward on the web pages without having to click those buttons on screen. But if you use the Logitech software, you can configure what all of these buttons do. If you don't like the color, they've got a bunch of different colors available on this product line, so you should be able to find one that fits your tastes. Now what I want to do is get this thing plugged into my computer so I can show you how it works. All right, I've got it plugged into my Windows PC right now, but this will work with just about anything that supports USB mice without a driver. Although the customization software called G-Hub only runs on Windows and Mac OS, but the basic functionality here will work almost universally. Now right now I'm on a web page. I can use the scroll wheel here to move up and down. If I push down that scroll wheel and move the mouse up and down, I can scroll just by moving the mouse. This is standard functionality for a mouse wheel. I can hit the uh, button here on the side to go back a level or push the forward button to go back up to the page we were just on. Right clicking here works and of course my left click will also work. Now you're probably noticing I'm making a lot of movement here to get very little movement on screen. But if I push down the DPI button here, that will adjust the sensitivity. So you can see now the mouse is moving a little faster. I push the button again, it's going faster still, and it can go pretty far from there. And then another press here will bring us back to what we had at the beginning. So you can adjust sensitivity here on the fly without having to jump into any control panels. And as a basic mouse, it works just fine. But let's take a look now at the G-Hub software and see how we can customize its functionality. All right, so here we are on the home screen of the G-Hub software. Again, this runs on the Mac and Windows, but not anything else at the moment. Now, this is the same software that Logitech uses with their more expensive devices. So if you had other Logitech gaming hardware attached, you would see it here. I'm gonna click on the mouse though and see what we can do with it. So right now you can see that we've got all of these buttons that can be configured to do something and each of them right now is set to their defaults. Now if I scroll down my uh, list of system actions here, what I think I'm going to do is have these two buttons here, the forward and back, map to something other than forward and back. So what I'm going to do is grab volume up from the list of system uh, commands here and drag that to the front, the forward button and have back here become volume down. And now that those are set, 
if I jump over to my full desktop here, when I push the uh, back button here, now that is going to cycle the volume down and up on the mouse. And you can see just going through the different options that you have here, you can configure a lot of different things to any of these buttons. Now, of course, a mouse is probably going to uh, have some basic functionality you may not want to change, like the primary click button here, but you could change that if you want. And then if you really mess things up, you can just click on here and go to use default, and that will get you back to the default setting. Now it's possible to assign a second function to every button on the mouse using something called G shift. And basically what you do is create a shift key on the mouse. Now that does require you to sacrifice the functionality of one of the buttons to enable the G shift, but it might be worth it if you want to have the mouse do more things than you have buttons for. So I'm going to demo this real quick. What we're going to do is go into the system screen here and you're going to see a uh, section here called device and underneath that is a uh, button assignment called G shift. Now I'm going to assign G shift to the uh, back button here and that's going to go on this button and when I push it you can see that it kind of shifts modes here into something else. So what I can do right now is just lock G shift on for a second and I created a macro a little bit earlier called LON that's going to type out some text whenever I push this button over here and we're going to assign this to the secondary click, but this is only going to appear when the shift key is pushed down. So I have to hold down this button and then click the right mouse button to have that text execute. Let me pull up a WordPad here and you can see how it works in practice. All right, so I've got WordPad opened up right now. Nothing fancy about that. I can right click on the screen and get the contextual menu. That works great. Now, if I hold down the button we assigned as the G shift button and push that right mouse button down again, now it's going to dump out the macro. And I think you could see how this could be really useful if you're in a game and you want to execute some kind of series of commands. Uh, you could have all of your buttons work normally and then you could hold down that shift button and have it do something else for the brief moment where you need it to do that. And I think that's kind of a neat way to extend some of the features here of a mouse with limited buttons. Now earlier you saw that we could adjust the DPI by pushing this button here in the center and they had four different increments of sensitivity and you can control those increments here uh, on the software. So for example right now we are at 400, 800, 1600 and 3200 but if I wanted to make the highest setting a little faster I can drag that out there and adjust what that setting will go to when I cycle through the buttons here. So you have some control over that. You can also adjust the polling rate of the mouse here. I don't know why you'd want to go lower than 1,000, but if you did want to add some latency to the mix or make it less sensitive on its polling, you can do that here. And then you can also set the uh, power mode lower if you're trying to conserve your laptop's battery life. So a lot of depth here. Now you can assign these settings to multiple profiles in the software and you can change the profile that's active by selecting it here on the front screen. And this will apply settings across multiple devices. Right now I've got it on the default profile, but I could make a new one here and make custom settings for that particular profile. And the cool thing is that you can save the settings to the mouse so that when the software isn't loaded or you go to a different computer, most of the functionality will be retained. So if I click on, and I'll just repeat that step there so you can see it. If I click on the gear icon up here and I go to the onboard memory mode by clicking on, I can assign the profile settings to the mouse's memory here by clicking on the profile name here and replacing the saved profile with whatever one I want to include on the mouse. It can only store one at a time, but what I could do, for example, is load in those settings that we were just playing with onto the mouse's memory. Now this will remember all the different button assignments that you made. Unfortunately, the macros do not copy over. So that text string that we did will not get copied to the mouse, but all the other button push functions 
appear to work, but otherwise you'll have to have the software loaded in order to make use of the macros. But overall, for a little mouse here uh, that doesn't cost all that much, I was pretty impressed with the available functionality, especially that you get functionality that you typically see on more expensive devices. I like the ability to store the uh, dongle in there, runs off a simple AA battery that are easily replaced or charged up if you have rechargeables. It's not all that heavy with the battery installed. It's about three and a half ounces or 102 grams so pretty lightweight, no metal or anything here, just a nice basic plastic mouse that has a bunch of hidden functionality. That is going to do it for now. Until next time, this is Lon Sivan. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters, including Gold Level supporters Chris Allegretta, Tom Albrecht, Jim Callagher, Hot Sauce and Video Games, and Brian Parker. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.